Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside, back to the bubble editions of our episodes at this time. Joining me today is Michael. He's also known as the Beer Chaser on Instagram. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us today, and, and we're going to talk about your Instagram. But before we do so, we're going to we're going to share a virtual beer. Uh, let the people know what you're drinking. Uh, so tonight, Triple Bone Tree from Third Moon, which, yeah, I They've also been great for me since I've been here. Awesome. I also have uh, Third Moon <laughs> have Tranquility. Uh, it's a double IPA. So uh, yeah, uh, Third Moon is a previous guest on the show. They were awesome to meet. Uh, I'm sure you've talked to them. Uh, speaking of your Instagram, I see a lot of Third Moon photos. So yeah, uh, I can assume you're a fan. A huge fan. Yeah. Awesome. I when, we, when first got to the country, moved to Milton and uh, Bebo was one of the first people to reach out and welcome me to the community. So yeah. The Fantastic. Great beers and really great guys. Yeah. Uh, so as we do on the show, we do a virtual a toast. Let's try this. Ah, no, it's too full. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. Mm. Yeah, it's a good Mango, beer. peach, creamy. Very nice. Uh, so what's what's the beer Instagram story? What's you bought you, what brought you to beer Instagramming? So it kind of happened by accident. Uh, a few years ago, I'd been doing a lot of a lot of beer posts in amongst the family photos and you know travel photos that kind of thing. And it was actually my wife suggested maybe I should look at focusing just just do it as a beer account. It was kind of seventy five percent of what was there already, so it made sense. Um, and yeah, she was the one that came up with the name as well. She <laughs> she's an author, so she's better with the words than I am. Um, and she she kind of came up with a list of names that she thought were thought were good and the beer chaser was the one that kind of kind of stuck so oh it's a great name it, it pretty much explains your journey of your chasing after great beers in in canada mm. and uh i'm pretty sure people here but it sounds like you're from australia originally yeah definitely uh yeah so i got here in december last year so what made you decide yeah. canada uh, i came for work so okay. i work in the metal recycling industry um and have done for a long time and yeah i got got a position in hamilton uh so moved moved over with the family so well hammertown steel fire steel pretty much steel there so big steel town yeah, yeah. so it's a per perfect place for my industry so. awesome that's great to hear uh and and the beer instagram is great i'm i'm enjoying it uh so uh did you discover craft beer in canada or i'll show you first and then you kind of brought that passion to canada with you no, definitely in Australia. Um, I've been drinking craft beer and, and just all kinds of like whatever different beers I could get my hands on for a long time. Um, probably in the last seven or eight years, really only really drank craft. Um, and things kind of accelerated. We had a, we took a family trip to the West coast of the U S in 2015. And then it really kind of ramped up again from there visited a lot of breweries up and down the coast and got, yeah, just got a bit more into the scene then, which, which has what, been great. Yeah. What made you decide kind of sticking with craft beer over macro, just the, the flavor, the, as I like to say, the diversity. Yeah, it was always like, yeah, for me, like I, it was always looking to try new things. Um, and the, like the big beer, well, one of the bigger beers back, back home in Adelaide is kind of, almost craft it's not like a typical so cooper's is a family-owned brewery um which is probably the second biggest brewery in south australia um and they're they're much closer to the to the craft end of the spectrum than like a molson's or they're much kind of a bit, bit hazy you know they still have still have sediment and all that kind of thing it's mm. not like a typical macro lager the pale ales and sparkling ales so it kind of was a logical logical progression really into some more extreme flavors i suppose awesome it sounds like you pretty much like kind of have always been in craft when we think about it like mentioning that the number two brewery in the area from from where you're from is still kind of craft or or more micro let's say than than craft yeah. or or nano or anything like that which is great that's uh that's quite the adventure to start on personally me it was you know start drinking in back alley forties with uh, friends of a blue, <laughs> blue dry and stuff like that. So that's where my beer journey began, but craft for myself began at, uh, 
I would say it's in Montreal. It's called Brutopia. Yep. It's a brew pub, fantastic place. But uh, the Festival Mondial de la Bière, that's a world beer festival. That's where mm-hmm. it really like whew, ramped it up and, you know, trying 40 beers on a weekend, 40 new tasters on a weekend. It's, it's great. So. Yeah, it's good fun. Yeah. Beer festivals are a lot of fun. I was really looking forward to checking out some of the ones here, but kind of COVID put a bit of stop to that. So Yeah, yeah. COVID kiboshed a lot of festivals and traveling and stuff this year, but uh, has gotten us, well, you're lucky enough, you're in Ontario, so you get beer delivery, uh, which makes me very jealous because we only have kind of convenience stores that allow beer delivery, which is fine because okay. I can get beer from all over Quebec, but it's not direct from manufacturer as I like to, as I like to use. So. Yeah. The, like the beer, the licensing and the, the restrictions in the beer scene here kind of were very strange to me. Like it was easier for me to get American beers back home in Australia than it is here, which like doesn't make any sense. It's like a 25 hour <laughs> plane ride to, for me to get to Adelaide. And it's easier for me to get, get look, get American beer. It doesn't, quite compute but yeah well, the, i've got the, to learn a bit more about it yeah uh, the canadian uh the canadian industry is very about drink canadian uh same yeah. thing with our tv you know cbc and, and it's government run so think canadian first uh which is great as a canadian i'm very very proud of, of our heritage and, and stuff like that and you know um well americans do have great craft beer their macro is a lot lesser than our macro i personally find so I'd rather drink a oh, Canadian yeah. macro uh, than I would an American macro any day. So. Yeah, I, I, I can vouch for that. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, what made you decide on the beer chaser and not any of the other ideas that your wife came up with? Um, it just really fit. Like, yeah, for me, it was always about looking for the next, the next beer, the next, you know, the next flavor. Um, so, you know, that chasing idea. And there's always, there's, I mean, there's a bit of a pun with, you know, you have a, have a beer chaser. So it kind of kind of worked on two levels for me. So that's great. Uh, what 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 do you find is your most like predominant? I mean, you're drinking Third Moon like there's no tomorrow from uh, from your Instagram. Uh, what is your kind of primary go to style right now, or are you just pretty much taste the rainbow? I'm yeah, I'm a yeah across the rainbow kind of guy. Typically, um, I really love my sours um, and the IPAs, obviously the scene in Ontario is very, very heavily focused on the, on Nipahs and hazy IPAs, which is a bit of a change. It's a big change for me. Um, there were a few, you, know, you could get a few hazy IPAs back in Australia, but it was predominantly more, more West coast style, um, which yeah, I, I love a good West coast IPA, but yeah, I love the hazy as well. So. Yeah, ha- Hazy's been very popular in Canada for at least two years now. Mm. Uh, it's it's just exploded. It's Everybody's making a New England or a Hazy or, you know, um, some guys are going back to crispy boys, as they call them, which is nice because it's, yeah. it's, it's nice to go back to a classic lager sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah. I, uh, yeah, it's, I, a li- it's a little bit difficult to, to drink 15 Hazy IPAs in an afternoon. <laughs> especially when they're clocking it at 6.5 and above. You know, a yeah, couple of yeah. couple of beers after a sport, and you're taking a nice long nap. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Uh, I love the photography. Uh, you focus a lot on the beer. Uh, you don't really do much of the selfie unless you find it's necessary, like your Christmas photo. Uh, what kind of is your inspiration for uh, sticking with the beer mostly, and then your your kind of write ups uh, behind that on your Instagram? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, the whole the whole purpose behind it is to talk about the beers and promote the beers. It's not it's not about me. Um, so yeah, I, I tend to try and keep myself out of it for the most part. You know, unless yeah, there's a special occasion, be it Christmas. You know, there's a photo of me at Disneyland having a beer, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, typically I will I will stick to stick to the beers. And in terms of the write ups. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a qualified, I don't have any qualifications. I haven't done a, you know, a pre home course, anything like that. So I kind of keep it simple, try and highlight what I like about the beers. You know, I typically, if I don't like a beer, I probably won't post it. Um, if it's, you know, someone that I have, like, if there's something really wrong with it, I'll contact the, the brewer <laughs> directly, not, not, you know, blast them on Instagram. Yeah. Especially for, especially, if, you know, if you're talking about, 
new businesses, yeah, they don't need that. They, you know, everyone's struggling to make a dollar in this this climate. So it's you know, my kind of thing is I'd, I'd much rather be positive and put the good out there. And you know, if something doesn't, doesn't work for me, then I won't talk about it. That's great. And I love the whole, you'll reach out to them directly because, you know, maybe a bad can batch went out and yeah, you're one of the first guys to be like, hey, is, is there something wrong? Can you can you check the beer? Because to me, yeah, that's, like that's, it's, that's a lot. If I just don't like it is one thing. Like, you know, that happens occasionally. You get a style that you don't like or a flavor that, you know, doesn't gel with you. But if you mm-hmm. pour out a, pour a beer and it comes out looking weird, then I'll always jump on Instagram and send them a message. And, you know, some guys will respond. Some breweries just don't respond at all, which I always find kind of disappointing because <laughs> at, at least acknowledge it. But so, yeah, you know, most guys are pretty good about it. If you tell them there's something not quite right, though. Last beer I had that I drained poured was called uh, Cinnamon Roll, and it was just like drinking the cinnamon challenge. It was terrible. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, but it's it's hard. Like, you know, these guys put their their heart and their passion behind the beer. I'm going to drink it. So Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. Unless there's something that's clearly wrong and it's, you know, it's gone bad, then yeah, typically I'll, I'll drink it. If I, if I, it's very, very rare that there's a beer that's so bad, unless there's something seriously wrong that I can't get through it. So yeah. yeah. Maybe if it's skunked or, you know, it's yeah. been uh, sitting around for two years when it shouldn't be sitting around for more than two months. So <laughs> awesome. Exactly. Um, you seem still pretty fresh to beer Instagram, but have you any collabed with any breweries for your Instagram or, or talked about maybe making a beer with any of these guys? Not at this stage. I mean, it's something I'd, I'd love to do. Um, I had a friend of mine from back home um, is actually the Australian importer for Collective, nice. um, which was kind of a, a coincidence when I, I when I came here I came here last year and just you know, just happened to drive past their place and not not realizing originally that they're actually in Hamilton. Um, so yeah, done it. I've been to a few events with him and you know, done a bit of stuff on that side, but nothing in terms of brewery collabs or anything yet. But if anyone's watching and would like to, I certainly would be very, very happy to do something like that. Great. Do you homebrew at all or is it in the plans or anything like that? I did a little bit of homebrew uh, back home. Uh, I haven't done anything since I've been here. It's um, you know, obviously <laughs> <laughs> haven't got a kit here. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's been a, it's been a strange, strange and, and busy time and you know, just getting settled in a new country and, We've moved, already moved since we've been here. So that's, you know, always fun and yeah. takes up a lot of time. So, Is uh, is Canada a permanent home or is it uh, until work decides, let's go somewhere else? It's, it's semi-permanent, I suppose. It's kind of, yeah, we'll, it's a bit too early to call it call it permanent. <laughs> um, just really depends on how, how things go. And obviously the 12 months that we've been here have been a fairly strange 12 months. So. <laughs> In, in some ways, it probably prolongs the minimum period that we're here because you can't really get to know anything when like, nine months of it's been completely out of the ordinary. So Yeah, yeah, it's been an interesting year, and that's how the whole uh, me interviewing... Inst- uh, so myself interviewing Instagrammers was a part of the show at some point. Uh, it just came a lot quicker than I was expecting it to. Uh, at least with this awesome technology of Zoom, I get to speak with people like yourselves who are more than willing to take their time to speak with me about awesome, delicious beers. So it's great. Yeah, and it's been, yeah, it's one of the things that's been really strange about this year is not getting to have that that face-to-face with people and, you know, particularly moving to a new country. And, you know, I've met lots of people through Instagram and social media, but that I haven't actually met yet. Um. <laughs> which is, you know, it's, it's strange and it would have been, not, it would have been really good to be able to, you know, go to a brewery and, and meet the people for, for real and you know, share a beer. But, but yeah, at least we've got Zoom and we can kind of replicate the, replicate the original plan. Yeah. yeah doing uh, virtual beers. Uh, and I'm sure with yourself, you know, getting to technically visit family in Australia online yeah. is pretty fantastic too. So uh, not even two years ago, we would have had this. So. Yeah, it's been great. Like, yeah, we, you know, for Christmas spoke to both sets of sets of parents. You know, 
twice. So once on their Christmas, once on our Christmas, because it's obviously it's not the same day. <laughs> um, which yeah, you know, is great. But yeah, it's it's not you know, it's it's not a real visit, but it's yeah. it's as close as we can get at the moment. Awesome. Uh, and you're currently in the the Milton Hamilton area, personally. Uh, no, we're at Jordan Station now, so down Niagara. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. When we so, first moved, we were in Milton, which is obviously how I got to meet the guys from Third Moon. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we, about three months ago, we moved, moved down to Niagara. Yeah. And what are some of your, your favorite places right now that you can go to when you're able to go to pick up, you know, a mix four pack, a mix six pack, go home and, and have some beers? Uh, what are some places, family visits from Australia? Hey, let's go here, here, here and here. So we can bring beer back and enjoy them. What, what are some places that you'd highly recommend in the current area and where you were before? Yeah, I would like, obviously, as you said, from my Instagram, there's a, there's a lot of third moon, um, which I'm you know, always keen to, to recommend their beers to people. Like I said earlier, they're, you know, not only the great beers they're producing, they're really, really great guys as well. Um, so obviously that, that'd be one. And being down here now, um bench is just around the corner i'm a big fan of their sours not necessarily such a big fan of some of their regular beers but i really enjoy their sours and they've got a really really great setup around the corner um and counterpart in niagara falls as well producing some really great beers and the, the food there is amazing um which you know only just discovered and obviously won't be able to go back for four weeks or so. Hopefully it's only four weeks. Um, but yeah, that would definitely be somewhere that I'd be looking to take people. And yeah, there's a lot of a lot of other places that I'm yet to check out as well, which I'm looking forward to when things open up properly. How do you feel is with uh, Instagram and talking to people, uh, them giving you suggestions of pe- uh, places to try or or messaging somebody in the area or, or Googling a brewery like, the use of the internet to discover new breweries, how, how convenient do you find that? I mean, it's super convenient. Um, and even like last week, I was recommending some breweries back home to, to a guy who was traveling where I used to live. So to be able to still be involved in the South Australian community and obviously getting all the, you know, getting all the ideas for where to go and who to see here has, has been great. Um, you know, looking at the Quebec scene as well. Um, I've been to Quebec a couple of times for work. Haven't had the chance to um, to explore properly yet, but yeah, there's definitely a lot up there I, I want to get to check out as well. Yeah, well, if you're ever in Montreal, feel free to message me. I'll make my suggestions. I can't say I'm a pro, but um, I enjoy traveling and I enjoy tasting delicious beer. Uh, so it, when you're in the area of Montreal uh, and around the area, I can't really suggest if you're in Quebec City or anything. I don't know the regions or Gatineau, because yeah. Gatineau is just above Ottawa. Uh, I don't know yeah. that as well either, but Montreal, hands down, I could give you everything within driving distance. I could give you everything within walking distance of if you're going to do a full day of drinking, park here or hotel here and go <laughs> drink. So <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. Uh, so I can't remember where I heard it, but Kaiju beer out of Australia. Does that sound familiar? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've always wanted to try it. How, if, if I were to visit Australia, what are some places that you'd suggest? I mean, Australia is obviously gigantic. Um, let's say Sydney uh, and Adelaide are kind of the two places I'm, I'm getting to visit. Where, where are some places you suggest craft wise I could drink there? So Sydney is probably one that I don't know as well. Um, I know that there is a, a lot of good, good breweries in Sydney, um, but I don't know it as well. Adelaide obviously is my hometown. So I know that run really well. There's some really great places. Mismatch, um, which is up in the Adelaide Hills um, and has got their cellar door setups really cool as well. They share with the cider company, with a wine uh, producer. They've got pizza on site. They've got a really, really great setup there. Um, And Adelaide Hills in general now is really exploded in the last few years in terms of craft breweries around there's uh prancing pony which is kind of a little bit similar to nickelbrook i suppose in in where it's located it's kind of in a like just in an industrial kind of area um but they've got a really nice they've got a nice beer garden section they have live music inside have good food um and 
some some really good beers and some some different beers too. So they you know what they one of the ones that they became well well known for and won won some awards was an India Red Ale. Um, nice. Which was yeah, it's it's a really good beer. It's it's a you know it's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. It's definitely a lot different to drinking a drinking a New England IPA. Yeah, I mean, just with the popularity of New England, it's crazy when you know somebody's like, "Oh, here's a double red," and you're like, "A double red? Oh my god, this is new and delicious! I have never had this." So it's um, I uh, you sound exactly like me. You, you're more than willing to try all these new places, try all these new beers. If you could do a flight, you do a flight. If not, you grab a six pack. Yeah, you know, and you drink some beer. So it's it's uh, it's great and and. I don't know how you feel about the beer community on Instagram, but everybody's pretty awesome that I've met. So, yeah, like, yeah, I, like I said, you know, met, met people who I call friends that I've never met through, through Instagram. It's been, it's been great. You know, the suggestions, um, you know, it's, it's been, been really good. And yeah, most people are, are generally pretty, pretty open and, you know, willing to willing to help willing to make suggestions uh, obviously you get a, you, know, you get a few bad apples here and there but yeah it's you know, it's, yeah, it's a few bad app- yeah a few bad apples is everywhere uh more so yeah. on i find twitter and then instagram is like twitter's the worst facebook's then like second and instagram's not as bad it's got you know everybody everybody everywhere has its bad apples even linkedin which is supposed to be a professional website has its bad apples yeah it's uh, it is what it is. It's social media, uh, but it's allowed us and and myself to talk to people like you and and all the the ladies and other gentlemen and all the brewers I've spoken with have all m- basically been through Instagram uh, through these pandemic pods that I've been doing. So yeah, it's uh, it's fun. Uh, so here's a caveat I add: when it's a little more safe, when we're all vaccined up, and we don't have to worry about uh, you know, our lungs stopping from COVID when it's safe to travel again in a cylinder tube for thousands of miles, a beercation you've never been on uh, that you need to go to. Uh, now I've been adding this new one where money is very much an option. So you can't be like super crazy. And then one E is not an option where you could go like balls to the wall and do everything you want. For me, like, I look, Although all of our like holidays have included beer, that they haven't been very beer focused. I've got, you know, I've got a family, I've got three kids, so there's always a there's always, almost always a brewery stop in the day, but it's not <laughs> um, it's not generally the focus. So for me, it's yeah, it's more about the about the destination, and then so one of the things that's top of top of the list for me is getting to New York. We've done done the west coast of US a couple of times. Um, done the uk but ha- haven't made it to the east coast so doing new york you know that kind of eastern eastern seaboard of the us is is very high on the list and yeah in terms of beer i know there's a lot to explore in that area as well so and then anywhere uh, you ever been to europe or anything like that or is that uh done the uk but not really mainland europe i've been been to paris a couple of times but that's as far into mainland europe as i've been um, so yeah, be, I'd love to go to places like Vienna and, and have a, and Prague. Try and check out that and get some of the more traditional European beers in as well. I've yeah, like plenty Bel- of English beers, but yeah, like Belgium and Germany, those are big ones. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, I've I've never been to Europe, and it's it's necessary uh, when I can again. So awesome. Uh, so so where do you see? the beer chaser brand kind of going next like where, where where's the um where's the growth going do you find i to be honest i don't know it kind of it's it's i've never really planned a lot of what i've done so far um it's just been a a very organic organic even like they, you know i did a giveaway a little while back because i got you know a thousand followers which the giveaway went completely bananas it was way <laughs> way more interesting than what i was ever expecting um but yeah there was there's no real plan like it's just kind of i just do it for fun uh, you know if, if people like it great you know the, you know the main thing is i get to get to try all these new beers share them with people and you know 
try and meet some meet some cool people along the way and try some great beers it's kind of all it is it's it's just a bit of fun awesome yeah that's that sounds perfect it's you know go with the flow let it happen enjoy life enjoy beer and and go from there yeah like it's it's beer it's not that serious yeah. like it's <laughs> not for me but, anyway like uh, obviously it's very serious yeah. to the people who it's their, <laughs> yeah. their livelihood but yes yeah. do you see yourself doing a prudum or a cicerone or, or anything like that a bgcp I I think I probably would like to do it at some point, um, as well as you know moving, working full time, moving countries. I'm currently finishing an MBA as well, so that doesn't really leave any time for, no. for <laughs> any beer education. But um, yeah. once once I'm through that, then yeah, I'd like to look at doing something like that just to just to build that knowledge base a bit. And, you know, actually know what I'm talking about instead of just making stuff up on Instagram. Yeah, that's pretty much what I do is, oh yeah, I <laughs> taste beer and it tastes like mango, I think. Oh, let's look it untapped. Yep, that mango. So hmm. that's uh, that's what I go for. Uh, I'm, uh, I think it's a railway city I read. So they're up in, I can't remember where, but they're doing what's called a brew university. Uh, okay. And it's uh, almost like a mug club, but once a month you actually get to try new things. So I think one of their months is like training your palate. Yeah. So I, I love that concept. And if I ever had a brewery, that's something I would do is, you know, a monthly, every last Friday of the month, here's a members only thing. Let's go. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah, cool idea. It's, yeah. Uh, it's great. Uh, awesome. Uh, I've got no other questions for you today. This talk has been fantastic. Uh, if you don't have anything you feel you need to talk about, let everybody know where they can find you online. Yeah, so on Instagram at the Beer Chaser, on Twitter there as well, the same, the Beer Chaser. Uh, you probably won't find me talking about very much beer on there. Uh, more likely to be talking about sport on there, but yeah, <laughs> you'll find me at both places. Fantastic. So we're going to add all that in the show notes. Uh, as for us, allbeerinside.com is the website. At All Beer Inside on all social media. We're hoping to have the merch store up uh, by the time this episode is out. And uh, as I say at the end of all episodes, drink craft, not crap. Awesome. Thanks a lot, man. Really appreciate it. No problem.